You know when you toss a stone into the water and the ripples ring out around it? Our life choices can be like that too. It's called the ripple effect. The story of National Record Mart and the Shapiro brothers who started it goes all the way back to their resourceful grandfather, Morris Kaplan in 19th century Russia. According to the Jewish archives at the Heinz History Center, Morris Kaplan, in an effort to avoid conscription by the Russian army, changed his name to a man who'd recently died in his village. His smart decision to save himself protected his future family. He became Morris Shapiro. That choice altered not only the legacy of his family, but it had ripple effects on a generation of music lovers across the ocean in America. Morris and his wife had eight children, and one of them, Hyman, immigrated to Canada in the 1890s. From there, he went to New York and eventually settled in Pittsburgh, where he married and had three sons, Sam, Howard, and Jason. And those Shapiro brothers would go on to reinvent how Americans consumed and listened to music. In 1937, the record industry was just starting to roll. Jukeboxes were all the rage, appearing across town from nightclubs to malt shops. Back then, the music of Tommy Dorsey, Benny Goodman, and Bing Crosby filled the air. Brothers Sam and Howard found work servicing the jukeboxes. And then it hit them. Perhaps they could make some cash off the used records they pulled out of the jukebox rotations. They were rejected cast-offs that took up warehouse space, and there were no other places that sold records except variety and department stores. So they started collecting them, buying them on the cheap, and sometimes even getting them for free. Together with their father, they opened a little shop called Jitterbug Record Mart and sold used 78s for 35 cents. Their experiment worked. Their business boomed. They added new records to the mix, selling them for 50 cents. And when that was successful, they added a classical and foreign music section to their store. Pittsburgh was a melting pot, and they wanted to cater to that diversity, adding music from anywhere from Croatia, Poland, Russia, Germany, and Italy. They changed their name to National Record Mart and opened a second location. By then, their youngest brother, Jason, joined them. But soon, all three left to fight in World War II, leaving their wives and father to manage the stores. Downtown Pittsburgh was the place to be after the war. Saturday nights were packed. Stores could stay open late to make more money. The Shapiro boys added more locations, six in total, throughout Pittsburgh. They played music in their stores, subliminally encouraging music sales. In 1964, a concert promoter asked the Shapiro brothers to help promote a big concert in town. He promised them the group was going to be the greatest thing that ever happened. They were reluctant because the $5,000 they paid up front was a big deal but they thought the risk might be worth the reward to bring this group, the Beatles, to town. <laughs> and it was. Tickets for the concert sold out in one day. The Beatles arrived on September 14th, 1964 for their 21st of their 26 stops on their North American concert tour. It was their only show in Pittsburgh and one that those 12,603 concert goers would never forget. Another young girl, Sam's daughter, Barbara Shapiro, would never forget that day either. Her picture, taken with John, Paul, Ringo, and George, hung at the headquarters of National Record Mart for many years. The Shapiro's risk of helping to fund that concert was like casting a stone into the musical landscape. The Beatles concert tour launched a musical revolution that would have ripple effects for decades to come. As 
as shopping centers sprung up in suburbs, National Record Mart did too. In the 1970s, the growing chain expanded to other states, including Virginia, New York, and Illinois. In 1978, they opened their first superstore, Oasis Records and Tapes, where they sold the latest and greatest, the cassette tape. In 1986, with 76 stores, the Shapiro brothers retired, selling the store to William Teitelbaum for $10 million. He had no musical experience and had a steep learning curve, but he had an aggressive game plan to double the company's stores and turn the focus to the up-and-coming compact discs. He launched a new logo, trying to move away from the dated record image. And while he had some success, they were the fourth largest retailer of pre-recorded music in the late 90s. It was short-lived. The big box stores of Walmart, Kmart, and Best Buy could offer CDs at lower prices. They tried to stay current with an online music venture and different specialty options, but eventually entered Chapter 11. The last of the National Record Mart stores closed in 2002. National Record Mart was the first music store chain in the United States. And while they're no longer in business, their ripples of influence are secure in America's musical history. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.